Daniel Boone was born, see November 2, 1734, Berks County, Pennsylvania, U.S. He was the sixth of eleven children in a family of Quakers. His father, Squire Boone, 1696-1765, immigrated to colonial Pennsylvania from the small town of Bradninch, England, sometime around 1712. Squire, a weaver and blacksmith, married Sarah Morgan, 1700-1777, whose family were Quakers from Wales. In 1731, the Boones built a one-room log cabin in the Ole Valley in what is now Berks County, Pennsylvania, near present Reading, where Daniel was born. Boone spent his early years on the Pennsylvania frontier, often interacting with Lenape Indians. Boone learned to hunt from local settlers and Lenape Indians. By the age of 15, he had a reputation as one of the region's best hunters. Many stories about Boone emphasize his hunting skills. In one tale, the young Boone was hunting in the woods with some other boys when the howl of a panther scattered all but Boone. He calmly cocked his rifle and shot the panther through the heart just as it leaped at him. Note, the story may be a folktale, one of many that became part of Boone's popular image. In Boone's youth, his family became a source of controversy in the local Quaker community. In 1742, Boone's parents were compelled to publicly apologize after their eldest child Sarah married a worldling, or non-Quaker, while she was visibly pregnant. When Boone's oldest brother Israel also married a worldling in 1747, Squire Boone stood by his son and was therefore expelled from the Quakers, although his wife continued to attend monthly meetings with her children. Perhaps as a result of this controversy, in 1750 Squire sold his land and moved the family to North Carolina. Daniel Boone did not attend church again, although he always considered himself a Christian and had all of his children baptized. The Boones eventually settled on the Yadkin River, in what is now Davy County, North Carolina about two miles west of Moxville. Boone received little formal education, since he preferred to spend his time hunting, apparently with his parents' blessing. According to a family tradition, when a schoolteacher expressed concern over Boone's education, Boone's father said, let the girls do the spelling and Dan will do the shooting. Boone was tutored by family members, though his spelling remained unorthodox. Historian John MacFarger cautions that the folk image of Boone as semi-literate is misleading, arguing that Boone acquired a level of literacy that was the equal of most men of his times. Boone regularly took reading material with him on his hunting expeditions, the Bible and Gulliver's travels were his favorites. He was often the only literate person in groups of frontiersmen, and would sometimes entertain his hunting companions by reading to them around the campfire. American Indians who were unhappy about the loss of Kentucky by treaties saw the American Revolutionary War, 1775-1783, as a chance to drive off the colonists. Isolated settlers and hunters became the frequent target of attacks, convincing many to abandon Kentucky. By late spring of 1776, Boone and his family were among the fewer than 200 colonists who remained, primarily at the fortified settlements of Boonesboro, Harrodsburg, and Logan Station. On July 14, 1776, Boone's daughter Jemima and two other girls were captured outside Boonesboro by an Indian war party, who carried the girls north toward the Shawnee towns in the Ohio country. Boone and a group of men from Boonesboro set out in pursuit, finally catching up with them two days later. Boone and his men ambushed the Indians, rescuing the girls and driving off their captors. The incident became the most celebrated event of Boone's life. James Fenimore Cooper created a version of this episode in his classic novel The Last of the Mohicans, 1826.
In 1777, Henry Hamilton, British Lieutenant Governor of Quebec, began to recruit American Indian war parties to raid the Kentucky settlements. That same year in March, the newly formed militia of Kentucky County, Virginia, mustered in Bunis Borough, whose population included 10 to 15 enslaved people. On April 24, 1778, the British allied Shawnee Indians led by Chief Blackfish mounted the siege of Bunis Borough. Armed enslaved men fought alongside their owners at the fort's walls. After going beyond the fort walls to engage the attackers, London, one of the enslaved, was killed. Boone was shot in the ankle while outside the fort. Amid a flurry of bullets, he was carried back inside by Simon Kenton, a recent arrival at Boone's Borough. Kenton became Boone's close friend, as well as a legendary frontiersman in his own right. Capture and Court Martial While Boone recovered, the Shawnee kept up their attacks outside Boone's Borough, killing cattle and destroying crops. With food running low, the settlers needed salt to preserve what meat they had, so in January 1778, Boone led a party of 30 men to the salt springs on the Licking River. On February 7, when Boone was hunting for meat for the expedition, he was captured by Blackfish's warriors. Because Boone's party was greatly outnumbered, Boone returned to camp the next day with Blackfish and persuaded his men to surrender rather than put up a fight. Blackfish intended to move on to Boone's borough and capture it, but Boone argued the women and children would not survive a winter trek as prisoners back to the Shawnee villages. Instead, Boone promised that Boone's borough would surrender willingly the following spring. Boone did not have an opportunity to tell his men that he was bluffing to prevent an immediate attack on Boone's borough. Boone pursued this strategy so convincingly some of his men concluded he had switched sides, an impression that led to his court-martial. Many of the Shawnee wanted to execute the prisoners in retaliation for the recent murder of Shawnee Chief Cornstalk by Virginia militiamen. Because Shawnee chiefs led by seeking consensus, Blackfish held a council. After an impassioned speech by Boone, the warriors voted to spare the prisoners. Although Boone had saved his men, Blackfish pointed out that Boone had not included himself in the agreement, so Boone was forced to run the gauntle. Through the warriors, which he survived with minor injuries. As was their custom, the Shawnee adopted some of the prisoners to replace fallen warriors. Boone was adopted into a Shawnee tribe family at Chillicothe, perhaps into Blackfish's family, and given the name Sheltawi, Big Turtle. In March 1778, the Shawnee took the unadopted prisoners to Governor Hamilton in Detroit. Blackfish brought Boone along, though he refused Hamilton's offers to release Boone to the British. Hamilton gave Boone gifts, attempting to win his loyalty, while Boone continued to pretend that he intended to surrender Boone's borough. Boone returned with Blackfish to Chillicothe. On June 16, 1778, when he learned Blackfish was about to return to Boone's borough with a large force, Boone eluded his captors and raced home, covering the 160 miles to Boone's borough in five days on horseback and, after his horse gave out, the majority on foot. Biographer Robert Morgan calls Boone's escape and return one of the great legends of frontier history. Upon Boone's return to Boone's borough, some of the men expressed doubts about Boone's loyalty, since he had apparently lived happily among the Shawnee for months. Boone responded by leading a preemptive raid against the Shawnee across the Ohio River, and then by helping to successfully defend Boone's borough against a 10-day siege led by Blackfish, which began on September 7, 1778. After the siege, 
Captain Benjamin Logan and Colonel Richard Calloway, both of whom had nephews who were still captives surrendered by Boone, brought charges against Boone for his recent activities. In the court-martial that followed, Boone was found not guilty, and was even promoted after the court heard his testimony. Despite this vindication, Boone was humiliated by the court-martial, and he rarely spoke of it. Final Years of the American Revolution After the trial, Boone returned to North Carolina to take his family back to Kentucky. In the autumn of 1779, a large party of emigrants came with him, including the family of Captain Abraham Lincoln, grandfather of the future president. Rather than remain in Boonesboro, Boone founded the nearby settlement of Boone Station. He began earning money by locating good land for other settlers. Transylvania land claims had been invalidated after Virginia created Kentucky County, so settlers needed to file new land claims with Virginia. In 1780, Boone collected about $20,000 in cash from various settlers and traveled to Williamsburg to purchase their land warrants. While he was sleeping in a tavern during the trip, the cash was stolen from his room. Some of the settlers forgave Boone the loss, others insisted he repay the stolen money, which took him several years to do. In contrast to the later folk image of Boone as a backwoods man who had little affinity for civilized society, Boone was a leading citizen of Kentucky at this time. When Kentucky was divided into three Virginia counties in November 1780, Boone was promoted to lieutenant colonel in the Fayette County Militia. In April 1781, he was elected as a representative to the Virginia General Assembly, which was held in Richmond. In 1782, he was elected sheriff of Fayette County. Meanwhile, the American Revolutionary War continued. Boone joined General George Rogers Clark's invasion of the Ohio country in 1780, fighting in the Battle of Piqua against the Shawnee Indians on August 7. On the way home from the campaign, Boone was hunting with his brother Ned when Shawnee Indians shot and killed Ned, who resembled Daniel. The Shawnee beheaded Ned, believing him to be Daniel, and took the head as evidence that Daniel Boone had finally been slain. In 1781, Boone traveled to Richmond to take his seat in the legislature, but British dragoons under Banaster Tarleton captured Boone and several other legislators near Charlottesville. The British released Boone on parole several days later. The Last of the Mohicans, 1826 During Boone's term, Cornwallis surrendered at Yorktown in October 1781, but the fighting continued in Kentucky. Boone returned to Kentucky and in August 1782 fought in the Battle of Blue Licks, a disastrous defeat for the Kentuckians in which Boone's son Israel was killed. In November 1782, following the death of his son, Boone took part in another Lewis and Clark-led expedition into Ohio, the last major campaign of the war. Daniel Boone, died, C. September 26, 1820, St. Charles County, Missouri, U.S. was an American pioneer and frontiersman whose exploits made him one of the first folk heroes of the United States. He became famous for his exploration and settlement of Kentucky, which was then beyond the western borders of the 13 colonies. In 1775, Boone blazed the wilderness road through the Cumberland Gap and into Kentucky, in the face of resistance from Native Americans. He founded Boonesboro, one of the first English-speaking settlements west of the Appalachian Mountains. By the end of the 18th century, more than 200,000 people had entered Kentucky by following the route marked by Boone. Boone served as a militia officer during the Revolutionary War. 1775 to 1783, which was fought in Kentucky primarily between American settlers and British allied Indians.
Boone was taken in by Shawnee S. in 1778 and adopted into the tribe, but he resigned and continued to help protect the Kentucky settlements. He also left due to the Shawnee Indians torturing and killing one of his sons. He was elected to the first of his three terms in the Virginia General Assembly during the war and fought in the Battle of Blue Licks in 1782, one of the last battles of the American Revolution. He worked as a surveyor and merchant after the war but went deep into debt as a Kentucky land speculator. He resettled in Missouri in 1799, where he spent most of the last two decades of his life, frustrated with legal problems resulting from his land claims. Until this day, Boone remains an iconic legend, if imperfectly remembered, figure in American history. He was a legend in his own lifetime, especially after an account of his adventures was published in 1784, making him famous in America and Europe. After his death, he became the subject of many heroic tall tales and works of fiction. His adventures real and legendary helped create the archetypal frontier hero of American folklore. In American popular culture, Boone is remembered as one of the foremost early frontiersmen, even though mythology often overshadows the historical details of his life.